What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. After Sound here, bringing you Splinter Lens content every single day. We also stream right here on this channel every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday morning. So come by and say hello. All right, guys. Well, that's it. I have removed a majority of my liquidity from the Splinter Lens LPs. And it's not for the reason that you think, if you are if you think that it's bearish, it's actually quite bullish. Now, I did suffer from impermanent loss, but at the end of the day, I ended up with way more SPS than I started with. And as you can probably tell from the recent videos and from uh, all, all of my sentiment pre uh, recently, I should say, uh, I'm quite bullish on SPS right now. And I think there is significant upside. So what am I talking about here? Well, a couple of days ago, I decided to take out all of my liquidity. Now, this was spurred by the fact that we knew the SPS and ETH pool would be coming to an end. It looks like that. Uh, there's still a proposal, right? I think it's got a day or two left. Um, and it is going to come to an end. And that's one of the places that I had, you know, a decent amount of liquidity. So if we're no longer going to be getting rewards for that, because the Dow is going to be taking over, I figured, well, I should try to do something with it. So I looked at SPS ETH, I took out some from uh, SPS and swap.hive. And I essentially converted all of those over to SPS, which worked out in my favor because the last couple of days we've actually seen SPS go up. So to explain like the impermanent loss side of things, had I stayed in there, I would have had less SPS, right? Meaning that uh, as SPS goes up and either Hive or ETH don't go up at the same rate, and we haven't seen them go up at the same rate, SPS is actually uh, skyrocketing right now, comparatively, comparatively, right? It's uh, up like 17 to 20%, I think, over the past week or two. Uh, compared to ETH and, and Hive, right? They're just kind of flat overall. So my whole point with this was I'm removing liquidity <laughs> and I'm removing liquidity and I'm sitting in SPS. So I actually increased my SPS bag quite a bit because I took that extra Hive, I took that extra ETH and I bought more SPS. So I know this is actually this is actually the, the, uh, the official admission, I guess, of like the fact that yes, I have now actively purchased more SPS. Now you could have, we could have just figured that it was always SPS to begin with because I, you know, it was the, uh, it was just the other pair of whatever I was pairing SPS with in that pool. But ultimately now that I'm back in, uh, you know, completely with SPS, I have all upside to that and and of course all downside right nothing is mitigated anymore to the upside or downside with the fact that i no longer have a pair that is much more stable like an eth or a hive but i chose to do that because i do think that there are volatile but in a good way volatile times ahead for splinter lens and for sps specifically now this is not financial advice i'm not telling you what to do i'm not telling you to participate or to not participate in liquidity pools i'm literally explaining why i decided to get out. And I'm happy so far with the decision. And the higher that SPS potentially goes, the less I, or actually the more I gain from the fact that I, I would lose less, right, from an impermanent loss standpoint. So now that I'm riding all in on SPS and, you know, not worried about ETH or Hive, I, I'm trying to think about this from the standpoint of, well, what's what's the value <laughs> of, of putting, of putting uh, you know, liquidity in, especially if we have the Dow that's going to be taking over a lot, uh, especially with the SPS ETH. So I'm not I'm not advocating that we just completely get rid of all of the rewards, uh, at least not yet. But I do think it's something to consider if we are going to start an SPS ETH pool that the Dow is going to be primarily participating in. We're reducing, we're reducing like a million SPS a month uh, from uh, the inflation, right? Which may not seem like a lot, right? It's a million per month, but that starts to add up. And if we're talking about ETH, uh, sorry, not ETH, but uh, BNB and Swap.Hive, I mean, this would have to come down to clay and figure out. But if we do start to go in those directions where we can reduce for that, well, again, it's not the worst thing in the world. And for people that want to participate in liquidity pools, Hopefully there will be land liquidity pools in the near future with all of the other resources that are available, right? Right now we only have the grain and uh, DECLP. We should have a voucher DECLP very soon. So that could be another place in which I think people might be able to participate. And then of course, all of the other LPs that will come when we have all of the grain, um, sorry, not the grain, but the other resources that go in. So I'm not in a rush to remove rewards and I'm not trying to push anybody, you know, one way or the other. In fact, I, I, I didn't vote against it. But, you know, in my heart, I was against the SPS ETH pool, uh, SPS ETH um, removal proposal, just because that affected me uh, quite, quite significantly, right? I, I was looking at it, I'm just like, well, now I either take it out and I suffer the impermanent loss, 
um, or I just leave it in there and I don't get any more, um, I don't get any more rewards, right? I'd have to transition to V3 and even then like, I mean, we, we would just be shutting off the rewards in general. Um, so at this point in time, I'm like, all right, well, I bit the bullet. I'm not going to force anybody else to bite the bullet, but I do think that this is probably a, uh, you know, the beginning of a trend here that we'll see for, you know, SPS BNB and SPS, uh, swap dot hive in the future. And again, I, I'm not trying to hate on anybody else. I'm not trying to say, oh, just because I had to do it, now you guys have to do it too, right? It's like, I just think that the trend is eventually going to go in that direction as the Dow potentially gets more value from the SPS that it's holding, right? So if it's holding that SPS, it has BNB, it's holding some Hive, right? I, I wouldn't be surprised if the Dow starts to take over and, and we can just almost eliminate entirely that entire part of the rewards because what it does is it reduces the amount of inflation which reduces the amount of sell pressure because i've always said that liquidity pools are one of the weirdest things because you are earning in the reward token uh sps and if you want to be bullish on the um you know on the ecosystem and double down and reinvest your profits you have to sell it right you you have to sell it which sucks because that's that creates a lot of downward pressure whereas now it's just like okay if we're not just doing that anymore and there's other places for for people for investors that like offering liquidity to be involved in namely right in game with the the DEC pools and all the the resources for land that could be the transition, right? That could be the transition. So I'm not rushing this. I'm not even pushing for it. I'm just saying that I accepted the reality as it is. And I think I can see the writing on the wall that eventually we go down that line and, um, you know, remove a lot of the rest of them, right? SPS BNB, SPS swap.hive. Maybe we leave DEC SPS in there. But the thing is, you know, the, the Dow has a ton of DEC SPS, right? So that could be something else that we look at. If people want to participate in pools, there will be options, right? It's just going to take a while for them to come in. So this is something that we can decide slowly and steadily as stuff gets rolled out. But hopefully by the third, which is just a couple of weeks away, we will get the second in-game liquidity pool, which will be the voucher DEC LP. Um, so that's all I have for you guys in this video. Uh, just letting you know that I'm taking my liquidity out. Uh, if you are in the SPS ETH pool, might be worth considering as well. I mean, go and look at it and see how you want to participate, see how it's going to impact you from an uh, impermanent loss standpoint. But like I said, it's it's been beneficial for me, and now it's kind of forced me actually to go all in on SPS with that capital, which I'm happy about because you know SPS is now pushing 0 0.007, which is a significant increase from a percentage standpoint, right? Which I, I would have only gotten half of that had I stayed in the LP. Granted, probably more than half, just because obviously ETH is rising too, but it's not rising at the same level as SPS. So now here we go. We'll see. I'm all in SPS. <laughs> Let's see what happens. But uh, that is all I have for you guys in this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll catch you all in the next one and see you around the game. Take care.